as if so now this God will worship our God. But when it says that when the, when the Lord and when the people came in the next day, they found their God, their idol God, Yagin, flat on his face. Mm-hmm. And they like, okay, this is awkward. This has never happened before. So, mm-hmm. you know, what's, what's kind of really going on? So all of a sudden, they, they, they pick up Dagon. They, they replace Dagon to its rightful place. Um, they worship and they do their service and they come back. Um, and then the next, the next day when they come back, they see again that Dagon is on its face again, bowing before the Ark of the Covenant. But this time, it's broken. The head is broken, the arms are broken off, and it's, it's, it's in worse condition than what it was the next day. Um, and so then the, at that point, they say, you know, something's not right. We're not going in this area no more. It's not holy. It must be the temple. It must be all those types of things. Um, so as you read throughout the pericope, you see that they, they, they had the Ark of the Covenant captive for seven months. Yes. Um, the Ark of the Covenant was with them. And so and they were going through all these things, and God put put um, tumors on the people and rats and all these different types of things and everything. And so um, th- it was clear that something was going on in the land that wasn't right. Amen? Amen. Um, so that's kind of what I want us to look at. But I really want us to look at verse 6, um, just the beginning of verse 6. And I know that my biblical scholars in here will say, Kyler, you're kind of isogeting um, the text here because it, j- it says the hand of the Lord. Mm-hmm. Okay? Yeah. Just, th- just that piece right there, the hand of the Lord. Um, I was looking out through all the through all of the different different biblical narratives and different things of that nature, trying to see what was the reaction of the Levites when the Ark of the Covenant was stolen. No one covers it. Mm. Not many people cover it. You know, they say you know they were in uproar. They were kind of this, they that, and third. They you know, but no one really talks about what the Levites did when their God, the presence of their God that they served, was stolen from them. Um, but it, it's crazy because everyone focuses on the turmoil and the things and how everything was in such, such disarray um, in the Philistine camp, if you would. Yeah. Um, and, and what I want us to look at here um, briefly for the next two minutes is that we are people of little faith mm-hmm. who always feel like we need to see what God is doing in other people's lives when they've wronged us. Yeah. Amen. But, but God's hand is working in the midst of the situation in ways that we couldn't even, that w- ways that we couldn't even fathom. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I know the old people, the, 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 the seasoned saints will say, you know, you just got to let God do the work sometimes, you yeah. know? But sometimes we as a people, it's just like, no, but everyone publicly seen me humiliated. They publicly seen me shamed. They publicly seen this for me. So why is it that the people, the person who came after me or these people who, why aren't they publicly ridiculed? Why, why isn't they, the way that they fall or the way that you get them, why won't they be publicly humiliated the same way that I was? Mm. But the beauty of the thing is that God is still working on our behalf. The Levites, yes. the, the, the biblical scholars didn't feel the need or, or didn't take the, take the time to write about what was going on um, with the Levites because the Levites did not worry. Yes. Uh, uh, I believe Donnie McClurkin writes a song that after you've done all you can, you just stand. Yeah. And so the Levites was in a, was, was in a season of standing, amen? Yeah. And I just come to give a little bit of encouragement on today that some of us are in a season of standing. Mm. It seems like the enemy is coming to rock you and coming to shake you and yeah. it has stolen your goods and your anointing. Um, but the thing about it is, like they said, the next day when they woke up, um, their God was laying, was, was laying you know, was laying before this God that they had stolen. You feel what I'm saying? And the setup about it, when you look at it, um, the showing of, of laying prostrate in front of, a, in front of another being, in front of yeah. the altar, it's, it's a sign of submission. Laying prostrate was a sign of submission in the Philistine culture, and that, would act, and that act was showing that you yelled to a higher authority. Amen. So what was happening in this situation is that Dagon, the Philistine God, was bowing to a higher authority, which was the Ark of the Covenant. Amen. Yeah. And so there was no need for the Philistines to worry because they knew they know that they worship the true and living God. Amen. Yeah. How many of us know that we worship the true and living Amen. God? And it doesn't matter what the what it looks like. It doesn't matter what your enemy think, what your friends say, what the professor say, what financial aid says, or any of these things, because God's hand is working in the midst of the situation. I'm pretty sure we can all think right now off the top of our heads about a specific situation that we are just struggling with. And it's just like, God, why aren't you moving in the midst of this situation? Why, where are you in the midst of this situation? God, where, come on, God, give me something. Give me a sign. Yeah. Give me, give me something. I've been there. I'm, I'm there right now with my seminary journey here at ICC. I'm like, God, you got to give me something to let me know that I'm in the right place at yeah. the right time. 
you got to, it's a struggle. Yeah. It's a battle daily. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but it's just like, I don't even know it, but God's hand is already working. Already working. Already working yeah. in the midst of the situation like never before. I remember when I, when I graduated from college and I was wrestling with, what do I do now? What's next? What's this? Like everybody kind of just makes it seem like jobs just fall out of the sky and all this kind of stuff. And it was crazy because just as clear as day, God showed me a hallway full of doors yeah as if you were walking down you know upstairs of any dorm or dormitory you walk and you just see all doors that are shut mm. and then on the other side of the doors i just seen hands mm. that were moving like this mm. and i'm like okay god this is a little creepy this is like what your <laughs> arms connected to the hand which is like the hand like the hand from this point on and god was just and, and that was god telling me the more that i prayed and the more that i asked for for um for inside of this of what god was showing God was showing me that whichever door you move through, I'm already moving in the midst of yeah. I'm already moving Work. in the midst of your situation. Yeah. You don't have to That's just pray to me. God, yeah. what am I supposed to do? God, yeah. which direction? God is saying that I've already given you the tools necessary on the inside of you to make the proper directions. And now I just need you to make that step. Yeah. To walk through the door and to trust me enough to know that even if you did choose the wrong door, I'm working in the midst of it. So it's going to work out in your favor. Yeah. Yeah. Even, though the, the, even though people say that it doesn't look like what it's supposed to look like, even though people say, Kyla, you know what? You barely made it through undergrad. You have no place. You have no position in a seminary institution. Yeah. People may say, Kyla, you've never in your life, you know what I'm saying, yeah. would have been in this space. Yeah. So how is it that you feel that you're good enough mm. yeah. to stand amongst the greats of ITC? Yeah. Mm. To stand amongst these other theologues who are learning, who are wanting to teach the next generation of believers. How is it that you feel that you are the one, that you are the chosen one of your generation? Yes. And the simple answer is because God's hand is already working All right now. in the midst of the situation. Amen. Whatever it is that you are going through, whatever it is that you feel may be stolen, whatever it feels you may be lacked of, like, like the Levites, you are in a season of Standing yeah. And knowing and understanding that God is already working in the midst of your situation. Already. God has already said, Amy, you're the one. Amy, you're the one that I chose for this season. Yeah. Mashaka T, hey, somebody's getting a word from your Facebook yeah. Live. Yeah. Somebody is getting exactly what they need. They're getting the encouragement that they need right. by seeing your testimony and by knowing it is, by knowing it is who you are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. God is already working in the midst of the situation, and so all we have to do is stand and allow God to be God. Yeah. One of the things that really kind of rocked me as I got here, and I'm going to my seat, is that when I first got here, and it was the whole uh, black Jesus, and then God, woman, God, he, God, she. And then I was talking to my mom about it, who has no <laughs> theological training. It's just her and the Bible, and that's it. <laughs> you know, her and the Bible and the spirit, amen. And she was just like, son, I think sometimes we just have to let God be God. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we get caught up in, you know, black Jesus or white Jesus or female Jesus and all this other kind of stuff or, or he or she God and all of these different narratives of inclusiveness. But if we just let God be God yes. in yeah. our lives, then imagine where it is that we would be. Yes. Imagine how our situations would work in our favor a lot sooner than expected because I took myself out of the equation and mm -hmm. allowed God to be the mathematician. Mm -hmm. So that's the only piece of encouragement that I have for you all today. Um, it, it was a very difficult situation, as you know, for the Philistines, but, 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 but in that, at the end of the day, it came back. Yeah. So if someone has taken the position that you wanted, if someone is trying to walk in your anointing, if they think that they're walking in your grace, I'm here to let you know, and I'm here to tell you that it's not as easy as they're making it seem. Mm -hmm. You don't know what's going on behind the other, behind yeah. the, um, the other side yeah. of the wall. God is working in your favor, and I'm here to let you know you're going to receive the double portion that you are that you shall be rewarded. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Amen.